Hey, I'm Steven, and this is episode 3 of the Atlas Arm Prosthetic Hand Project. We'll go through a couple iterations. I messed up a few times, but ultimately I decided on a uh, design that I like a lot, and it's going to hold everything the way I want it to, and hopefully in the next episode we'll have a hand that will go on top of this forearm that's controlled by all the electronics from the last episode. I printed out the design and almost immediately after I got it off the print bed I realized that it's going to be completely useless. I can fit the batteries in beautifully, both of them slide in. Power boost fit in on the top as well, but if I were to try and fit the Arduino and the EMG sensor in here, it's going to get crowded, there's no space for them, so I'm going to have to design something else. So I'm going to make a little pocket or like a enclosure that's going to hold all the electronics that can just slide in and out of the forearm part and that's what I'll populate. So I'm going to cad that now and then print it out. Alright, so I have my new printed socket thing and this works a lot better but it's still not what I need so I need to do another redesign. What you can do is take the power boosts and slide them in on the top and they fit in there pretty well and those are upside down. You can take an Arduino and that guy fits in there as well. And there's even a little programming port up there. And all of these are holes for mounting the power boosts in there. So now we have our power boost and our Arduino mounted in there all right. The EMG board stays in there pretty nice as well. And then provided you can get them all to stay inside all right, the batteries fit in beautifully too. But this thing is huge. If I hold up my forearm as a reference, this thing is clearly so much bigger than what I want it to be. Sideways as well. It's way too big. I need this to be a lot smaller. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that nothing is on the side of the batteries. The thing that I don't like is about how wide it is. It's really not too thick. I think that's probably a good thickness. I don't really have a choice because the thickest part is the two batteries next to each other. But I do want it to be a little slimmer this way. Yeah, so I'm going to CAD that and print that puppy out in some nice red PLA. Alright, so my print is done. It's got this huge cavity in the center for the batteries to fit in. You can see at the bottom I have like a perfectly recessed little area for my EMG board to fit. There's a hole on this side for the plug. Then all of the power boosts go into the top part and those fit right into a little pocket that I made for them in CAD and those fit nice and neat right up in there. On the back side I've got a USB, I don't know what type this is, type 2, type B something. And that is going to slide in like this, and obviously it's going to be the other way. But that'll be facing out, and then that's how I'll recharge the batteries. This USB port is going to be wired up to the two power boosts, and then this will be how both batteries can get recharged. I've also got a hole in the top for my servo cable to run through, and then that'll come through down here. Once everything is in, I'm going to take my batteries. There's nothing more satisfying than designing something in CAD and 3D printing it and then everything just fits together. So I got the batteries in here, they're both going to fit in really nicely, they're going to cover over the EMG board. So you can see both of them slide in really well, there's a little hole in the bottom for the cables from the EMG board to come up and connect to the Arduino, which is essentially just going to rest in front of here. I'm going to 3D print a little bracket that'll hold it just in place. This front part is going to be open for Maker Faire so people can see what's going on inside. Um, but all the cables will come up from the EMG board to here, and then there's also a little port for the cables from the Arduino to go up and connect to the servo, the power boost, all that jazz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wire everything up and put them in their proper places and see if it works.
Alright guys, so I finally got everything mounted inside the forearm piece. I've got this switch sticking out because I have a really tiny set of switches that I'm going to use for it, but I don't have any heat shrink right now, so I'm going to wait until I get some heat shrink in before I add this, but this switch basically just turns on both batteries. Um, so you can see in here I've got the two blue battery packs, and I have my Arduino mounted with all the cables coming from the EMG sensor on the bottom and the power boost on the top. And then I printed out these little brackets that just kind of hold the Arduino in place and make sure the wires kind of have some management to where they go. On the back is a USB style charger and you can just plug that right in. Alright, so I'm going to turn it on and if you look closely you can see the blue lights shining in the top for the power boost which just means that they're powered up properly. And then also I have a little script on the Arduino that runs that makes the pin flash every second or so just to make sure that the Arduino is getting its power. Um, I have yet to test it with the EMG sensor. Now you can see in the side there's a hole and that's where the plug for the EMG sensor goes and the plug was a little too big. So what I did is I just took it to my belt sander and it fits right in there and it snaps right into the side. So what I can do is leave this sitting on a table and have people come up at Maker Faire and try and put these pads on themselves and try and control the hand with different muscles. Um, so that makes it really nice. I can just unplug that. So yeah, that'll do it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next one where I'll design the hand and put the servo in it and connect it all together and try it out.